the previous videos I put an emphasis on the aesthetics and refinement of the code so that it's easier to understand and it's pleasing to look at and work with and the code that you see in front of you is very representative of the style that I use when building .NET programs in a professional setting and building programs in general. I like to use a concept from Donald Knuth called literate programming. And so the primary access point which you see here for downloading feeds through a console program basically makes that, that process very obvious. And I find it useful to build console programs that work out the main logic for a process or for a program or even for a part of a program. And in this case, I've also streamlined things a bit with a external file for the feed names and URLs so that that's no longer embedded in the software application. I could take that concept of externalization further, but right now I have a good balance between the ideal and the practical. And so I created a merge function that merges two collections together and does it incorpor incorporating the uh, business rules or the logic rules uh, for this process. And I'm actually uh, very satisfied with that function and how well it performs. And then I wanted to make sure that the main logic for this process is well documented and well understood. Even if I were to walk away from this um, for maybe a couple of months or a year and I came back to it, that it was very well understood what was going on. But the central logic basically respects the operational requirements of website operators. So anytime you go to a website, that website only has a certain amount of capacity. The servers that host that website has a certain amount of capacity in terms of how many people and processes can access it within a given amount of time. And so some um, operators, especially those that publish RSS feeds, has such rules where they really don't want you accessing the feeds um, more than once an hour, right? So, I've incorporated that into the main rule set for this process so that as part of my testing I can ensure that that also works and one of the ways I can validate that is by looking at timestamps in the SQLite database because the timestamps should correspond to uh, the logic as well as the row counts for the feeds and feeds articles tables right and so what you see here right here is that central logic and it is absolutely vital and it's the core logic of the program. Without it, the whole thing falls apart. Because while you could eliminate this logic and still download feeds, you may not be downloading them for very long if the way that your program accesses those websites is too aggressive and too frequent of an interval. And so it was vitally important to make sure that the safeguard was encoded in a very strong way and in a very consistent way. And I used um, the .NET culture info to uh, standardize the timestamps and the way timestamps are represented across um, various parts of the software application. And that's vital in terms of evaluating the timestamps, you know, one against the other. So I'm very pleased with how this is represented. And let's see what comes next after this.